congratulations to all the teams that made the Evertech Fantasy Footy Finals in 2015. Wayne is here with myself, Simon, and we're here to run the rule over the six matches taking place this weekend. Good luck to everyone. And we'll start with, well, one versus four, myself and Ron. There's a bit of history to this game. Uh, Wayne, talk us through it. I've had a look at this game, and it's going to be a really interesting one. Uh, Ron, obviously, being the standout uh, team for the vast majority of the season. Um, at one stage, he was up and about boasting that he might not lose a game. Um, he's been corralled a little bit, but he's still a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Mora, on the other hand, has come storming home. He's sort of been there or thereabouts, but sort of was looking at an elimination final. Uh, but he's snuck himself into the top four. Snuck. Uh, Six, six points in. You snuck. I mean by six points. You snuck. <laughs> uh, um, and it's going to be a really interesting game. There are a couple of really intriguing aspects of this game that I'm really keen to, to, to have a good look at. Well, the uh, first one would have to be the Adam Trelaw injury, which is huge. big news during the week. Trelaw will not play uh, for Ron's team. And one thing that I wanted to point out from Ron's team is that uh, Josh Caddy and Cameron Guthrie scored 250 points between them last week. Well, they're both coming up against Hawthorne, so I'll be interested to see if they can post up numbers like that again. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought it that will happen. Interested uh, to see if that yeah. uh, if show and makers and Tippett are both still on the side. How show and makers in particular? Tippett's been okay of late in, in, in a rock roll, uh, but how show and makers gets a game for the Bruins side? I'm not quite sure. It's just like people aren't, people aren't people aren't sure how he gets a game for Hawthorne either. Um, and the other one, well, I guess hopefully Buddy comes back to, to take Tippett's influence out. Um, I'm a bit worried about Stephen Martin, though, up against Carlton. He's going to put up something special. Cruiser has been pretty good of late. Um, as a Carlton fan, I've been watching him pretty closely. He's been quite impressive and, and he's a huge addition to Carlton. But Steph Martin, uh, obviously one of the best rucks in the competition, probably second behind uh, Goldstein, uh, both as a player and, and certainly as a dream teamer. You've had a look at my team? I have had a look at your team. Um, Just trying to speed this thing up a little bit. <laughs> Plenty of improvement. The people in the Evertech Fantasy Pretty League, their, their time is very valuable. Oh, yes. Tolls tell are very, very <laughs> in the hands, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's good. Kind of look at Morris' team. There's the, no huge overachievers. He's scored pretty reasonably, and he's come absolutely storming home. He's one that I've really kept an eye on. A bit worrisome. You're doing really well at the right time of year. Um, Plenty of improvement. Bernie Vince was a bit down. Bernard, we know that you love him. He's an avid follower of your side's Twitter feed. They're Bernie all Vince. over it. Love um, Malcheski was a bit down, but on the other side of the sort of ledger, he could conceivably be a sub risk somehow. He's uh, been a couple, of times, a couple of times this year. Robert E's gone a bit berserk, I think. Uh, Chad was a bit down last week. Could, could sort of bump himself up a couple of points. So what you're um, saying is the only way from my 1596 of last week is up. I would be surprised if you scored sub-1600 this week. Uh, so, <laughs> it, I guess now that we've looked at both the teams, any predictions for Mora Viron? Yeah, well, uh, to quote your uh, infamous country predictions at the start of the year, I'm actually tipping the USA to once again invade Iraq. Um, you come storming home and, and one start to falter, so... I'm tipping you'll get up. Hopefully you are correct. USA! 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 So the other qualifying final is your good self against Eugene, one of the traditional rivalries of the league. I'm looking forward to it very much. I've had a look at your team. Um, there's a bit of a concern over David Mundy. I haven't heard anything to suggest that he won't play, but uh, apparently he's in a bit of doubt, which is a problem. Uh, I don't know how John Goodman is, is in your A team. That's a, a, a real concern for yourself. Uh, Jack Loney... Sam Mays, those are players who are definite weak spots in your team, but generally speaking, scoring pretty well. And I think you could, um, well, you'll definitely put up a big fight. I'm not sure whether you'll get the chocolates or not. You've had a look at Eugene's team? I have. Uh, they say winning form is good form, and the only sort of way I can describe Eugene's form is completely and utterly pathetic. <laughs> to what, score what, what was the score last week? What did he score? 1 2 2 4. Last Sorry, say week. that again. One, two, two, four. You got finished in the top four, right? He certainly did, and he just so? scraped 1,200. Uh, pathetic score, Eugene. Um, and 
You got a couple of issues. Joel Hannison, Nick Natanui, Tom Scully, James Wilt, Sinclair still in doubt. This is a, a, just a patchwork of a side. This is like Essendon in the preseason. Four of his starting sides from last week confirmed out. As he says, one other in doubt. Uh, we know Eugene is notorious for not having the best depth. Uh, I'm not willing to rule him out, of course, because I'm the opponent. <laughs> but he, he's going to get a tap. One game that you need to take, keep a close eye on is uh, the Adelaide match. Um, they've obviously got a bit of a weakened opponent in Essendon, and uh, Eugene does have Tom Lynch and Taylor Walker, so potentially you know 12 to 14 goals between those two. So they could carry him home. The, the, the players out just uh, too much for me. I'm tipping you in this one. Um, I don't know if you want to put your tip in, but I presume you're not tipping against your team because otherwise the League's Integrity <laughs> Commission will be uh, investigating you. But I you will stay very clear of controversy uh, <laughs> at this point of the year. Good luck to both of you, and um, hopefully, hopefully bloody Eugene can field a competitive 18. Thanks, Mara. Best of luck to you today. Um, unfortunately, since I bet on the other team, <laughs> uh, we won't be going for pizza. Now, the other game that we want to look at now is uh, Liffa and Schulberg, the elimination final, 5v8. We've had a good in-depth look at this one, uh, run the rule over both sides quite comprehensively, and Liffa wins. Uh, yeah, no doubt. No, Homer, it's very easy to criticize. Fun, too. The final final of the top eight is uh, Lenger and Tull, and this one should be an interesting contest. I'm... Not 100% convinced with Tull's form at the moment. Coming in, he had eight scores in his last start under the score of 60. So that's something that we want to improve. But I guess the only way is up. Uh, yeah, I'm putting this in as a nomination for the most boring game of the year. Uh, both teams really struggling at the moment. Uh, four scores under 60 uh, in Tull's midfield, which is clearly a weak spot. Do you count the Ruckman as a midfielder? No, the five of Hugh do include him. Um, it's a very good pre picture for Tom. Uh, yeah, it's not much more worthy for Langer. Do you have a prediction out of this game? Well, well before we do that, Langer's team, uh, no mids, no forwards on the bench, and Wines, Joe Watson, Dane Beams out. It's just, uh, just a bit of a patchwork side, really. Yeah, it's been a bit unlucky, uh, Langer. To be fair to him, you add those three into his team and he's right up there in terms of uh, faux ball contention. Um, he's fallen apart a little bit towards the back end of the year, but he's still hanging around. Still got some reasonable players. I'm going to back him in to somehow beat Tom. Well, I don't think it really matters who wins this game. They're probably not going to win the next one. So good luck to both of you and hopefully uh, whether you're playing Ween or Eugene next week, hopefully you knock him out. Change the channel, Marge! Over to the bog roll finals now. Uh, we're getting to the dregs of the fantasy footy competition. And it's, well, that's actually not fair that I say that because the first match is Greg and Levy. And, well, both put up pretty impressive scores. Greg put up 1595 virtually with 17 players because one of them, one of them scored eight. This is going to be a rip to of a game. It's actually going to be a very good contest. Both teams in pretty good form. Uh, Greg's had two big 1500s in a row. Uh, Levy, 1500 against yourself, the man down. Probably should have uh, beaten me twice yeah. this year. If you could field 18 players, you'd have beaten me twice. Sort of shot himself in the foot there a little bit. Uh, the winner absolutely deserves to be able to roll out of the race for the bog roll. Um, I'm tipping Levy as much as I'd love to personally hand deliver the bog roll to win. Been waiting to, for that all year. I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's coming along. I think you've got a chance. I'm going to tip Greg in this one. It's going to be, like you say, a very good contest. I think the winner is going to, have, sorry, the loser is going to have a very high score. Um, but 15.95, I can't argue with that sort of form. I am honoured to accept your waste. And the final final that we are looking at, I love saying that, is <laughs> Andrew Lipson and Slavic. This is going to be a, a good contest as well. The fact that Slavic is in this end of the finals, Wayne, you're not very happy about that. It is absurd that... What, what did he finish? Sixth in Six. points four? That he can miss out on finals, yet Tull in particular, the Fuhrer, can 
might get to do something different in the back lane that makes it a bit sexy. Well, now that he's here, do you see him potentially challenging for the bog roll, or will he be uh, given a week off this week? Well, next you, week? <laughs> usually I'd say the father should win this with Panther, but he might be in a bit of trouble this week because he's losing both Lacroix and Cornelio, and that spells trouble. Uh, two very, very good footballers. Um, two good scorers, obviously Lacroix forward, Cornelio in the mids. Brings Andrew Lipson right back into this game. Um, could turn the match. I think it will turn the match. I think Andrew Lipson's going to get out. I'm not 100% convinced by Lipper's side. I think he's got a lot of sub risks in there. Sam Cahoon was sub. Wapolo was sub a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you, you believe that Andrew Walker could be the sub for Carlton. I believe he might not play. He might not even play. I just think there's a lot of suspect players in there. Um, I don't think that he'll score more than 1,300. That's about what he scored last week, and I think it's about what he'll score this week. And in, if that's the case, it's Slavix to win, and uh, I think he'll get up. So who won? The losers? No, they lost. <laughs> Lose. That's it. Good luck to everyone this week. Wayne, what are you going to do on your week off next week? <laughs> A little bugger. <laughs> uh, <laughs>